Honorable the Vice Chancellor, Judge of the International Court, Judges of the International Court, Justice Ganuna and Justice Dalbir Bhandari, professors and colleagues. In today's function, I have hardly any role, but I and Vice Chancellor are very fond of each other. And out of his respect for me, he invited me here. And I have tremendous regards for this Vice Chancellor. He is a unique person in our country who decided to leave Harvard and join this institution. You know, there was nothing here when we started. But when I come here, I find a ray of hope that yes, we shall overcome all hurdles and build a finest law university in the country, and it has happened. So credit goes to all his colleagues and all those who are associated with this great institution. I have been, uh, I have had a long tenure as law minister of this great country. It was my desire to build as many law schools as possible because initially there was one in Bangalore, National Law School Bangalore, and I had a keen desire that they should have in all these states national law schools. So now, practically in all states, we have a good law school, but I found that there is a dearth of faculties to teach. And you all know, it is the faculty that matters. It is the teachers and professors who make good people. In your life, this, this first phase of your life, it is the professors and teachers who will make a good lawyer out of you, who will make a good diplomat out of you, or anything you want, you can decide. But you need a proper knowledge, because it is knowledge that purifies you, and the strength comes to you. Legal profession has great importance in the modern times, because you decide you not only decide cases after becoming judges, you also protect the civil liberties, human rights, and all kinds of uh, activities all over the world. The special class of people, lawyers and judges, have to struggle all their life. This is a continuous <coughs> life of struggle, which is as a duty cast upon us. So if you just minimize your role, then you cannot understand what is the meaning of justice. Justice is a divine function in all the religions. If you read any religion, it is the quality of justice that matters. And if you read Merchant of Venice and Portia's dialogue, you will find what justice means and how she did against the Shylock. So all these are proverbial saying. I've re read all the religious relics. They say a one who spends even a minute of his life in the rendition of justice is blessed. So in all religions, in, you will find this. Particularly in India, we had a diverse system of governance. Earlier, in the Aryan times, the king was fountainhead of justice, and he used to render instant justice in his court. Then in Islamic days, we had a new system of rendition of justice in the totality of Islam. And we rendered, they also rendered justice. If we read uh, the Mughal period, you will find Jalaluddin Akbar saying, I'll revolt myself if I do injustice. So Jahangir was very famous for instantaneous justice. And he gave a verdict against himself. English people, they found India a land of diversities. And diversity means every state has a un its own kind of justice courts, every state. So they decided to give a united kind of justice administration. So in the 1833, Charter Act was passed in which Lord Macaulay, the principal maker of Indian law, he said to, to the British Parliament that here is a country of diversity and uncertainties. 
I want to give India a uniform and unique system of justice which will codify all laws. Although in the common law tradition, there is no codification. The lawyers and judges, they have developed their legal system. And just recently they started codification in 1993 or 94. They passed the criminal justice system, amending their role. So that, that speech of Macaulay gave us this IPC, the CRPC, Evidence Act, all the laws they, they gave to us. And our 14th Commission of Law Commission, our Sitalwad Commission, they went through this. And they said, this majesty of common law system suits us. And we are keeping in the commonwealth system with the common law. But it goes to the credit of our founding fathers that when they enacted this constitution, they broadened the system of justice, combining the power of judicial review from United States, from the famous case of John Marshall, who said in the very important jurisdiction that we have right and we have the powers to enact on any legislation of parliament as well as on executive action. And they had difficulties in Roosevelt's time, but they overcome by a famous Chief Justice Warren. So this is in India, our courts have vast power of judicial review, both in the High Court and Supreme Court. And it is the ability of the lawyers and, of course, judges to administer this power of judicial review. When I and Justice Dalvir Bhandari were practicing in Supreme Court, there was a different kind of court. And there was no expansion of judicial review. It started after the first phase of the Supreme Court, perhaps in the case of Justice Bhagwati and Dhirubhai Desai and other uh, kind of judges who were very kind-hearted people and who gave this power of judicial review a great length. Justice Bhandari's judgment himself, you'll find a great expansion of Article 21, Life and Liberty. The very concept has been developed into full list of human rights. And I've seen, and I had in my mind that this interpretation of Article 21 will go a long way. And these environment court and all this. So what I mean to say is that very distinguished people alone can make good lawyers and judges who work with dedication and commitment to rule of law. And rule of law is another very, very important function which is exclusively our duty to uphold. Otherwise, if there is no rule of law, how can you consider democracy to flourish? Overlapping of jurisdiction and not respecting the verdicts of court leads to anarchy and people who fight. India had gone to one stage where they were not even implementing Supreme Court judges, judgments. I had to advise the Prime Minister that I would not be part of that government where we don't uphold the rule of law and respect the verdict of Supreme Court. Many, many cases in India were settled by us through ADR, double power project and Ron case. It's a vast investment Americans have made, and we are not paying them. McDermott case, so many cases. So we said we'll have a powerful institution where you can sit and decide. If the government is sincere, you can deal with the parties internationally. If your reputation goes bad, then nobody will come to India. So we have to maintain the reputation. And the prime minister himself decided that we should open an ADR system by which we can directly decide between the parties and to the satisfaction of both parties, maintaining uh, party autonomy. And many, many young boys and many young professors and, and judges are working in that direction. And that is why I had collaborated with this August institution of Global University that we will exchange ideas. When we invited two distinguished judges from Hague. We thought it proper that we, they should visit this university. And today their presence will inspire you. And I personally feel, and I argued many a times before Ministry of External Affairs, 
that India should insist in participating in international community more and more. But our difficulty is neither we are obeying the WTO obligations. We had to go time and again, please relax this, this and that. Legal sector, we are still in deficit. I and Vishwanathji, who was my law secretary, we went to America, we went to England, we went to European community. They all insist that we should up to date our legal system so that we can meet the aspiration of the global legal community. But we are not inviting such good law firms that US has got or English people have got or any continental part of continental. We should now be able to work with the international community. There is a financial cake of $180 billion available in the legal services. But we are sharing none. If you have to draft a, a contract to buy aeroplanes, you have to go to Washington, D.C. or New York to get a, a memorandum of purchase drafted there. So this institution is the first institution which is going in various disciplines. And I wish you can expand more the, the legal education in various or in policy administration. Most important, male governance is the real melody of our and you said about delays. Three, there are three difficulties with Indian legal system. Delay and expenses also. And common man is losing faith in the law courts. So I did two actions. One is I created special courts, 9,000 courts on central budget that you shall travel to the poorest place and in the villages and decide their cases at the threshold. So judges, English judges, to demonstrate their sincerity, went on the horseback to the villages and rendered justice. They are known as the most, most kind judges. In English history, if you see the common law, they started from those lawyers who went to the farthest, remotest area and worked for the common man. So that is why this is a common law tradition. Our judges also, must travel not on horses now, there are beautiful limousine and buses, you go to the poor people and tell them what is your problem. And they will tell you in simple language, you have two amicus lawyers, both sides, and they will assist you. Again, law society will pay to them. And they will render instantaneous justice. So no delay, no expenses, and substantial justice. But after I left, the central government, and I joined as the governor of Bangalore and Kerala. So I found those system has not been further followed up. So money lapses. So we don't bother. The society should be alert. It's now your turn. You should flood our courts with superior lawyers. If you want really to give justice, you should be able to uh, work like we did as a barefoot lawyer in those days. This is Bhagavati exhorted the legal profession. I want barefoot lawyer to, to the area. And you do not know, five years, I worked as amicus to the courts. Whoever wants me, I am available. Because otherwise you remain briefless. So this is a monopolistic trend in the legal profession. And we succeeded. The Legal Aid Society, the Los National Legal Aid Society, National Ecological Adalet, they were all drafted by me, and I feel a lot more progress is needed. So I have very sincerely, I hopes, and my hopes are here, that if you demonstrate, then we can go to other universities, and then it will take a lot of time. Our institution is now primarily deal, dealing with alternative system, faster justice, and dispute, commercial disputes, all kinds of things where international community is keen. And I hope that we can. So now you have very important lecture of Justice Bununa about home. It has been, I had myself been invited to, to The Hague uh, in my days as a law minister. I'm simply fascinated by the discipline and the work of that great institution. I have known all the judges which went from India to Hague Dr. Nagendra Singh, he rose as the president 
and left a good legacy. Then my dear friend, Justice Pathak, he was my Chief Justice, and he remained there for a long time. And now, after a long time, Honorable Justice Dalvir Bhandari, uh, he is there. And of course, the English judge also, Christopher, and he is a great scholar from Cambridge. So international community is giving you more guidance today. You must carefully listen to Justice Banuna and try to emulate as far as possible. Thank you. Yeah.